ஹாய் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் இன்னும் நம்மளை ரிவ்யூ செய்ய போனது ஃபிசியாலஜிக்கல் இன்டெகிரிட்டி பேசிக் கேர் அண்ட் கம்ஃபர்ட் ஆ ஓகே நமக்கு கொஸ்டின் நம்பர் ஒன்லேக்கு போ த நர்ஸ் இஸ் அசஸிங் அண்ட் இரிட்டபிள் சிக்ஸ் மந்த் ஓல்டு இன்ஃபென்ட் டியூரிங் எ வெல் பேபி செக்அப் த இன்ஃபென்ட்ஸ் வெயிட் இஸ் நைன்டீன் பவுண்ட் சிக்ஸ் பாயிண்ட் ஃபோர் அவுன்ஸ் ஸோ அதாவது அதாவது எயிட் பாயிண்ட் எயிட் கிலோ The infant does not have an elevated temperature. The heart rate is 102 and the respiratory rate is 32. The mother states that the infant wakes every hour or two throughout the night. The infant wants a bottle and falls asleep while eating but doesn't stay asleep. Which of the following instructions should the nurse give the parent? So baby is waking up. many times in the night that is the issue here or can the baby fall asleep while she is feeding so what instructions you will give to the parents first option is instruct the parents to offer acetaminophen 325 mg orally for comfort and uh, diphenhydramine 25 mg orally for sleep option 2 instruct the parents to offer high calorie solid high calorie solid food during the day time hours so the infant doesn't wake up hungry during the night option 3 instruct the parents to offer the last feeding as late as possible and put the infant to bed awake without a bottle option number 4 suggest using pacifiers taking the infant to the parents bed or rocking the infant asleep let's see what is the correct option here the correct option here is option number 3 that is the infant is having sleep disturbances related to night time feeding feeding late and putting the baby to bed awake help the infant learn to recognize bed time and to self soothe a fall asleep so that's what you have to do give baby feed as late as possible and self waking up and soothing self soothing so that the baby will learn you know maybe midnight you are feeding and putting the baby to bed and morning by 6 o'clock they will wake up and he'll have his next feed not giving every 2 hours or 3 hours feed in the night that's not correct okay so the why the first option was wrong tylenol may be appropriate for teething pain and benadryl is an antihistamine that may cause drowsiness but the dosage is given us in adults okay 325 that was too much uh, the option 2 was wrong because the infant weight is within normal limit so the high caloric food may not be an appropriate the baby weight is okay with the uh, age appropriate weight so you don't have to give high caloric diet for this child so option 4 was wrong because the academy of pediatric doesn't promote putting infant to bed with the parents rocking the infant will not help learning to self soothe so if you are rock rocking the baby won't learn how to self soothe okay so that and putting uh, with the parents sleeping with co sleeping is not advised okay so that that's why that was wrong Now let's go to question number 2. The nurse caring for a child burned over 25% of her body assists the in physician in performing dressing changes on day 5. After the initial injury the child appears disoriented has a fever of 101 degree Fahrenheit 38.3 degree centigrade and is crying in pain. which of the following nursing intervention would be the most appropriate in caring for this client oh, you have to choose the most appropriate option here first uh, the baby is having this is the fifth day and 20 baby is suffering from child to child 20% of burn and baby what is showing it appears disoriented as a fever baby is disoriented having fever fifth day and going to have dressing change for this one so what is the most appropriate in this scenario what the nurse has to do first option is gather equipment for the dressing change and explain procedure to the chi- child 
Second option, do a com complete physical assessment and notify the physician of the finding. Option 3, administer appropriate analgesics and gather equipments for the dressing change. Op option 4, offer the child an enticing distraction from pain such as video, music or toy. Let's see what is the correct answer here. The correct answer here is the second option is the correct one. The child may be suffering from an infection. The nurse recognizes that disorientation of fever, disorientation and fever are the first sign of sepsis in burn uh, clients. It would be most appropriate to assess for the causes of fever and pain and notify the physician before, proceed, before proceeding. So first, because there is some, uh, what is that, red flag there. Baby is having fever, disoriented. So look in the fact and do a complete assessment, report to the physician. Then you know, once you do the your assessment, after that you can arrange stuff for the dressing and everything and get some order for maybe antibiotics or something, okay. It has to be notified first to the physician, then you can do the dressing later on. The nurse, first option, why wrong? The nurse would ga gather equipment but not before addressing a crying child. Baby is crying, child is crying, so you have to address the other issues. Question option 3 was wrong because analgesia may be appropriate but not before assessing the pain and source of fever and disorientation. So first is see what is the uh, symptoms that the baby is uh, having. So first address that one. The option 4 is wrong because distractions may be offered uh, like a painkiller like that stuff may be offered after the assessment but they do not take a priority over notifying the physician regarding the fighting about the source of fever and pain okay, question number three three as a nurse is taking care of a young child a few hours after a tonsillectomy which of the following nursing intervention would be appropriate to, to promote adequate nutrition and oral hydration for this child. So the child underwent tonsillectomy, so fresh case few hours before. So here, how we can promote adequate nutrition and oral hydration for this child? That is a question. So first option is offer the child warm soup. Watch for signs of bleeding and suction vigorously to remove old blood. So here two things you'll see big no to so don't select me fresh it's a warm soap you can't give warm and other vigorous suctioning is not recommended okay so easily you can eliminate that option option two offer ice chips after the child awaken advance to cool clear liquids and suction gently to remove oral secretion without causing the child to cough or gag okay Option number three, maintain the intravenous fluids appropriate for the child's weight for the next 24 hours and keep the child NPO. So no need to keep this test. So this one also you can think that no need to keep and tonsillectomy baby nil or no, NPO for 24 hours. So this one also you can eliminate. Offer, so option number four, offer, offer soft, warm, food so the child will not be hungry uh, orange juice to provide with vitamin c and milk shakes for calories again a warm food so for me it's option number two is the correct one let's see what is the correct test? that is the option two is the correct one the child may first take ice chips one to two hours after awakening followed by cool clear liquids without pulp or ice pops Gentle suctioning may be necessary to remove secretions in the mouth and to keep the child from gagging. Suctioning should be kept to a minimum to avoid traumatizing to oropharynx. Okay, so minimum suctioning. If only necessary, you have to do suctioning. Okay, question. Uh, the first was wrong because warm liquids may increase bleeding and should be avoided for the first few hours after surgery. 
3 was wrong the physician may maintain an intravenous infusion post operatively but it is not necessary to keep child npo after the surgery ice chips or cool clear liquids are soothing option number 4 soft uh, foods are not given in the first few hours after surgery to prevent MSS. Orange juice is acidic and juices should be al alkaline when offered to a post-operative child. Milk products are uh, controversial because they caught the throat and may cause the child to cough. Okay, that's the reason the fourth option is wrong. Question number four. Now the nurse is caring for a child who had an adenoidectomy and tonsillectomy 10 hours ago. The nurse, uh, the parents are in the room and preparing the child for bedtime. Which of the following nursing interventions would be helpful to promote rest and sleep for this client? The baby underwent adenoidectomy and tonsillectomy 10 hours ago and how you can promote rest and sleep for this client that's a question option number one is provide a cool water rinse adjust the bed of the uh, head of the bed to 35 to 45 degree angle and offer an ice collar for comfort that is first option second encourage the parents to leave so the child can sleep yes big no no option number three suction vigorously before the child fall asleep to, en to ensure the child has a patent airway. No vigorous suctioning. No, no. Question number four. Uh, option number four. Provide a, wa provide a water rinse. Offer an ice collar for discomfort and assist the child in finding a position of comfort while promoting a patent airway for sleep. For me that looks correct. And correct. Let's go to the rational what it is given the correct option is four as i said assist the child in finding a position of comfort this may be prone semi-prone or semi fowlers an ice collar and a cool oral rinse will also aid in comfort option number one wrong because semi fowlers may not be the position of comfort for some children so other position may need to be considered like a prone semi prone position is considered first then maybe the fowlers okay so option two was wrong because the parent should be encouraged to stay with the child and to participate in the and the care and the comfort of the child if possible option three suctioning should not be vigorous after an adenoidectomy or a tonsillectomy question number five a nurse has been assigned to an adult male client who is less than 24 hours post-op. In report, the nurse learns that he rings his call, he rings his call light frequently, is anxious and has had pain medication as ordered. Which of the following non-drug nursing intervention should the nurse include when caring for this client? So post up 24 hours, okay, and he's anxious, he's ringing bell frequently. So, so what the nurse here, a non-drug nursing intervention, okay. So focus in the question and what the question is asking you, just analyze the question first. First is, uh, uh, assures the client his anxiety is understandable because the pain medication needs time to take effect. Option two. Assess another client's first, giving this client time to relax before evaluating his level of pain. Third, the call, call the client's physician to increase the amount of uh, frequency of pain medication ordered. Option four, provide a quiet environment, offer repositioning, straightening bed linens, offer fluids and assess his pain level. So let's go and see which one is the correct and what is the rational, what are the rationals. Last option, the option number four is the correct one. Changing the client's position because these are all non-drug, okay, nursing interventions. Changing the client's position, removing wrinkles in the bed linens, helping the client to take a drink or limiting noise, 
can help the client to rest and may reduce pain why option one is wrong is the client will probably be more reassured if physical comfort measures are taken rather than just verbal assurance you are going and telling the patient just i will be okay you already received the medicine now before that you have to do some and make sure that you assured a physical comfort for that patient okay second is prioritizing is necessary but avoiding an already anxious client may cause the nurse to overlook a serious symptom so you are if you are neglecting or ignoring this patient is already an anxious and you are going to another patient that may not help they may may, uh, may accelerate the symptoms here may become more worse okay hmm. uh, the option three call a physician of, of if needed after offering basic comfort measures and doing an assessment if required only call the physician otherwise now you see how you can you assess the patient or offer the physical comfort and reassure the patient is nothing is working out that is the time you will call the physician okay question number six a nurse is taking care of an adult male with bilateral leg fractures both side legs fracture okay he has a long leg cast on his right leg he has a right leg long cast as well as a traction applied to the left femur traction on the left femur which of the following is the main purpose served by the cast for this client so what is the main purpose of cast here that is the question okay he has wear a cast leg cast on his right leg okay then on the, on the left femur he has a long leg cast on his right leg as well as a traction applied to the left femur okay let's see so the main purpose of cast well, that is the question here so let's see the options immobilizes the tibia and fibula and correct deformities that is the first option second option is keeps the client who is in traction more comfortable third immobilizes the pelvic bones for better healing fourth encircle the trunk and stabilizes the spine so let's go to the rational so it's given here the first correct option that and the first one is the correct option a long leg cast serves to immobilize the tibia and fibula by being placed above and below the knee and ankle joint okay that is the correct option here that immobilizes tibia and fibula and the placement is between it below the knee and the ankle joints okay the second option is wrong because a long leg cast is not used for comfortable for a client in traction okay so it is not used to a long leg cast is not used for comfort for a client in traction okay uh, the third option is wrong a long leg cast doesn't immobilize the pelvis it doesn't in, uh, help for immobilization for the pelvis fourth is wrong because the body cast not long cast encircle the trunk so not the long cast it's a body cast it is encircle the trunk question number seven the nurse is taking care of an elderly male client who has shorten, shortness of breath cough and fluid in his pleural space the physician asked the nurse to assist in the performance of a therapeutic and diagnostic thorough synthesis. Which of the following nursing intervention should the nurse perform to assist this patient? So you are going to assist the physician for, for doing a thorough synthesis. What, what you are doing uh, to assist patient here? Okay, that is the question. Option number one. Make, cert, uh, make certain the consent are signed, witnessed and filed in the chart. So that we, you have to do not while performing. It, is, it has to be done before the procedure. Okay. So you can eliminate that. Offer oral fluids because the client will not be able to take, take the drink during the procedure. No, that is not the correct option. Yeah. Option number three. Help the client to lie flat. With a pillow under his feet for comfort during the procedure 
the lying flat is not the position for thoracynthesis the last option is help the client to sit up and to place his arms over a bedside table encouraging him to remain still during the procedure that is a correct option now let's see what are the rational given here the correct option is placing the client in a sitting position over a bedside table is the most comfortable and allow the best opportunity to remove fluid at the base of the chest option one wrong because the nurse should make certain that consent are signed before the start of the procedure but that doesn't affect the client's comfort option two is fluid should not be offered right before a procedure to avoid nausea and vomiting if pain is experienced option three is wrong lying flat with feet elevated is not the position of choice for thoracynthesis okay let's go to question number eight the nurse has an assigned uh, has been assigned to a two day old male infant on the mother baby unit of an acute care facility the infant will undergo a circumcision procedure in the afternoon before being discharged the following morning which of the following known pharmaceutical intervention should the nurse teach the parents to keep this infant comfortable while circumcision heals so in the afternoon the baby is going for circumcision and the morning they are getting discharged so what known medic or uh, non pharmacological measure for comforting this child okay so let's see what nurse has to instruct the uh, do Uh, option one is fasten his diaper tightly to avoid having a move around the wound. Option two is apply petroleum jelly to gauze and place over the end of the penis. When changing the diaper, leaving the diaper slightly loose when fastening. Option three, offer feeding more often to soothe the child who is in pain. Option four is wash the end of the penis vigorously to prevent infection. So let's see the options. Sorry, phone died. Ah, uh, the rational is the correct one is applying the petroleum jelly. Okay, petroleum jelly offer lubrications and. help to stop friction of the diaper over the raw area option 1 is wrong because leaving a diaper slightly loose when fastening will be more comfortable than tightening okay option 2 is the correct one petroleum jelly as i told you option 3 is wrong because offering feeding more often than necessary may cause may cause msis and is not the best way to soothe an infant fourth is wrong because the end of the penis has a yellow exudate that is a part of healing process and should not be vigorously washed off it will disappear with healing question number 9 a nurse is taking care of quadriplegic young man who suffers from c2 c3 fracture after an auto accident 3 months prior he has tracheostomy is ventilated ventilator dependent and has been discharged to home with skilled home nursing care the nurse knows that this client is not a risk for autonomic dysreflexia uh, this client is at risk for autonomic dysref- dysreflexia which of the following measures should this nurse take to keep the sil- client comfortable manage his elimination needs and prevent a common cause of autonomic dysreflexia option 1 turn the client at least every 2 hours and look for skin breakdown option number 2 allow the client to sleep 8 to 10 hours without interruptions each night to promote rest option number 3 offer advertising fluids at least every 2 hours during the day to promote hydration option 
straight catheterize the client to prevent bladder distension and maintain a regular bowel program to prevent impaction that is the correct option let's go to rational sorts given uh, turning is uh, option one turning is necessary to prevent uh, decubitus ulcer and to promote comfort but it is not necessary to prevent the increase in blood pressure as as seen with the autonomic dysreflexia. Uh, dis Option 2. Sleeping 8 to 10 hours is not related to autonomic dysreflexia. Option 3. Offering fluid is nursing measures but may not be related to autonomic dysreflexia because a client with a spinal cord injury may have a fluid restrictions to help control blood pressure. Correct option is 4. Bladder distension and bowel impaction can result in autonomic dysreflexia causing an critical increase in blood pressure. Now, option, now question number 10. The nurse is taking care of child over after an open reduction of the radius and ulna of her right arm. The child is now immobilized in plaster cast splint reinforced with an ACE wrap. Which of the following non-pharmaceutical pharmacological nursing intervention will promote comfort for this child? So the baby is having a right arm uh, immobilization uh, plaster cast. Okay. So what non-pharmacological nursing intervention is apply uh, applicable here let's see apply a heat pack to the approximate area of the surgical incision option two position the child so the cast is flat on the mattress of her firm support mm, third elevate the cast on a pillow apply an ice pack to the approximate area of surgical incision and Reposition the child every two hours. Fourth, do not move any part of the child's arm until the physician orders specific position. Let us see the rational. The correct option is elevating the extremity and applying an ice pack will help to reduce swelling and may reduce pain. Repositioning is a comfort intervention. Option 1 is wrong because heat would not be appropriate because it would cause rather than reducing it would cause it would cause uh, rather than reduce swelling so it may increase swelling okay that's what it says the option number 2 is wrong because the cast should be elevated for the first 24 to 48 hours and not be left flat on the matter so cast to be elevated so option number four is wrong the child should not be totally immobilized because it can lead to post op respiratory complications so i will continue with this in the next video hope you are enjoying your studies wishing you all good luck uh, see you with the remaining questions in next video thank you so much